You talk about the energy crisis in Europe uh, and what it's done to prices and demand. Of course, it's been a bonanza for the Australian energy exports, uh, looking at record levels now, gone up even since the budget was prepared to, to be delivered last uh, month. And you're in Perth today announcing support for a rare earths plant as well, looking uh, away from coal, away from gas and iron ore, new export opportunities in the resources sector? Oh, those hard-working men and women in the resources sector, Chris, they've been absolutely outstanding. Uh, they've worked through the pandemic, uh, whether it's in the west, whether it's in the east or somewhere in between. Uh, and what they've done, the hard work that they've put in, the risks that they've taken, has meant that the Australian resources and energy sector has smashed all export records. But we expect that they'll do some $425 billion in economic activity before 30 June. That's up from $246 billion at the start of the pandemic. It is just astronomical. Uh, and this is where you know, many of the state Labor governments are getting their royalties from uh, for their large S. But we need to make sure that we continue to build different strands of the economy. And we've announced a loan today of up to $1.25 billion for Iluca resources here in the West. Uh, they'll build a rare earths refinery uh, that we think could deliver up to 9% of the world's current demands for oxides. Uh, it is an important build. Uh, it's important that we get our own supply chains and logistics in place. And we know there's growth into the future. We think there could be 50,000 direct jobs in this sector by 2050, and we want as many in Australia as possible. Now, the price for coal at the moment is just off the charts in terms of metallurgical coal and thermal coal. There are many elements of the Labor Party. Obviously, the Greens want to get rid of our coal industry. Just what is the outlook, though? Because these prices can't stay this high forever, surely. Uh, surely there's going to be a big drop-off sometime soon. If they're buy, we're selling, Chris. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've seen what the Greens want to do. They want to end all new coal, oil and gas projects. Uh, and here's what this would mean. Uh, coal has become just the second commodity ever to break $100 billion worth of exports for Australia. Uh, we think it'll be around $110 billion uh, by the end of this financial year. That's a lot of jobs. Uh, that is a lot of taxes, a lot of royalties. That's a lot of schools and roads and hospitals that we can build. Uh, and they're still just 4% of the world's thermal coal production. So we'll continue to support the sector. A Green Labor Alliance would end the sector, uh, and I think that's very clear. Mr Band has said that's the deal, that they've got unfinished business, and that is the business from 2010, last time they lined up with the Labor Party. And that's the risk for every voter that's out there, every resources worker, everybody that relies on the resources sector for their employment. Can you trust an Albanese government? Well, apparently he's had an epiphany. He's had a complete change of heart from the position he's held for more than two decades in the parliament. And we've been very clear. We support the sector. We want it to be bigger, not smaller. I think when he's in Queensland, he supports coal. A uh, different story when he gets back down to Marrickville in Sydney. Thanks for joining us, Keith Pitt. I appreciate it. Mate, it's great to be with you.